Well, again, I apologize. I have very little time before I have to uh, wing my way to the next mission, Our Lady of Peace. But I do ask you to please be in, bear in mind that here at St. Therese we practice the traditional Catholic faith. That is to say, the practice of a faith is a religion. Religion is nothing more than putting into practice what you believe. Here we believe the traditional Catholic faith. Unchanged, unchanged from the times of the apostles themselves. We believe what the Holy Ghost has inspired the Church to believe all these centuries. We have not modified the catechisms to fit the modern times and the mentality of modern mankind, so to speak. We have kept the traditional catechisms, we have kept the traditional mass, the traditional sacraments, and so we always will. We just commemorated two days ago the 105th anniversary of Our Lady's first appearance at Fatima, May 13, 1917. And we need to remember that the mass that the little children of Fatima attended, the mass that they grew up in, the mass, by the way, from which Jacinta and Francesco <coughs> were buried in the grace of God is the traditional Latin Mass, the very Mass that we offer here now. The Mass going back to the ages, the Mass of St. Thomas Aquinas, and those came before him. This is the traditional Mass, the Mass that St. Thomas offered each day. So we hold to this Mass because it is Catholic. Since Vatican II, they've entered in a great adventure. I know Vatican II really was the so-called great reset in the church. And the great reset had to happen first, spiritually, before it could happen to the rest, rest of the world. So that is what we see happening before us today, in the world today, a so-called great reset. But remember that there was an obstacle to that, and that was the traditional Catholic faith and religion the traditional Catholic Church, stood for our Lord and the teaching that the Holy Ghost had given to the Church throughout the centuries in her Catholic tradition. We still adhere to that. It's important to, to know that for those who are here for the first time or just recently come to us, because the new order that has come out since Vatican II is not the same religion. It is actually a different religion because it is the practice of a different belief, that is modernism. Modernism was condemned by St. Pius X back in 1907. And uh, he warned that the modernists would take control and that they would produce a different faith based on their modernist beliefs and a different religion that would be based, practice, put into practice their modernist beliefs. And that is the new mass. The, those are the new sacraments that you see in the modern churches. We reject those. We don't believe that they are really Catholic. But are the, rather the works of the modernists that St. Pius X warned us about. So if, if you practice, if you go to the new Mass, please realize that is a different religion. But if you're new to us, I ask you not to come to receive our Lord in Holy Communion here until you decide that the traditional Catholic faith is your faith and the traditional Catholic religion is your religion and that is what you intend to practice. So I ask you to refrain from receiving until you make that decision. Because it is really a commitment. It is truly a commitment. Because the faith and the religion of traditional Catholics is a, an entire way of life. As it used to be, just well, less than a century ago, less than two generations ago. This is what the Catholic people all practiced. This is what we still practice here at St. Teresa's. Now in the Gospel today, our Lord says that he's going to be leaving the Apostles. And they're very saddened by it. You see that the Gospels for this time all seem to come from the same place, the Gospel of St. John. St. John gave us a full account of our Lord's words to his apostles at the Last Supper. St. John chapter 13 all the way to chapter 17 recounts the words of our Lord to the apostles. Here we find ourselves in chapter 16 of St. John and our Lord is telling his apostles that he will be leaving them. But it is good for them that he go. Because he says he will send them, the Holy Ghost, to guide them. 
And our Lord tells us what the Holy Ghost will do when he comes. We know that our Lord refers to the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, as a, as a paraclete, that is an advocate, one who will strive for the salvation, the sanctification and salvation of our souls. We know that that will be his work, the sanctification of the human soul. We know that he is called the Spirit of Truth, also by our Lord. We know that he proceeds from the Father and the Son in the Blessed Trinity from all eternity. We know that when the Holy Ghost comes, he will not teach a new faith other than what Jesus Christ, the Son of God, taught, but rather that the Holy Ghost will bring to our mind all the things that Jesus himself has taught us, and that he will confirm us in the faith that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, gave us already. So the Holy Ghost will not be inventing new doctrines as time goes on, but he will rather be enabling us to understand and appreciate the faith more and more, and to keep us on the same, that is to say, to keep us in the right path of our Lord's own teachings, just confirming us in his faith. As our Lord says, he will receive of me, and what he receives of me, he will give to you. And he will glorify our Lord, Jesus Christ, because he receives of him. That is how we know that the Holy Ghost proceeds not only from the Father, as the Orthodox say, but also from the Son. His Father and the Son together as their mutual, eternal, and infinitely powerful love. Now, when the Holy Ghost comes, our Lord says that he's going to confirm us in our faith. And the word that is used for that is the Latin word convincere. Convincere, we have the word convince that comes from that word. So he will convince us of the truth of our faith with a supernatural certitude. He enables us to know that what Jesus Christ teaches is in fact the truth of God. The Holy Ghost will confirm, therefore, the faithful and will solidify them in their faith. It will give them an invincible faith. But it is very different to see the Holy Ghost work in the world because for those who reject the faith in Christ, for those especially who are obstinately rejecting the known truth, that is one of the sins against the Holy Ghost, you know, to obstinately resist or reject the known truth, for those who reject the truth of God and those who reject the truth of Christ, the Holy Ghost also will convince, as it were, but the form of the verb is a little bit different. To convict, that is the, what the Latins call the fourth principal part of the verb, convinco convincere, they are convicted. And this is what the gospel says today. He will convict them. They will be convicted of three things, he says. The Holy Ghost comes into the world not only to convince and to confirm the faith of, the, of our Lord's loved ones, but to convict the world of sin and of justice and of judgment for their unbelief. My dear faithful, there is all the difference, not only in the world, but all the difference between heaven and hell, between believing or not believing, between faith and rejecting faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God, as St. Paul says. As he says, on behalf of God, my just man lives by faith, and so he must. Let's realize that this world has a prince, our Lord refers to him today, who is this prince of this world. Well, the prince of this world is the one whom we have proclaimed by sin, to be the one who is the master, the master of mankind because of their sins. When we sin, we basically say, I acknowledge Satan to be my Lord. He is the one I obey. That's how Satan takes, them. that's how he takes sin, as a form of worship of him, because it's a matter of obeying him, a matter of saying he is my Lord. That's what sin does. <clears throat> The prince of this world is the one we see at work today. 
we see all of this evil and damage being done because so many have given themselves over to him and his control to his influence. Our Lady said at Fatima that more sins, more souls go to hell because of sins of impurity, sins of the flesh, than for any other reason. And we see ourselves confronted with that evil in its, you might say, ultimate reality in abortion. Because abortion is the, the ultimate consequence of all sins of impurity. <clears throat> all sins of impurity are based upon the idea that the pleasures and satisfactions and gratifications that come from impure sins, that all of this satisfaction really is what the power of giving life is all about. It's not about actually giving life as God first commanded to our first parents in the Garden of Eden. Increase, multiply, and fill the earth. The first command that God ever gave to any human beings. Give life. And so God enabled us to give life, to demand of him the creation of a new human soul, like a, an entire new world, <clears throat> with all of its decisions and its ability to know and to love. Its ability to know and to love God. This is the power that God has invested in us. And yet we take it, we twist it, we use it selfishly to gratify ourselves and not to give life. And finally, if it does, to murder that life, to snuff it out. Because as far as we're concerned, this activity is not about giving life. It's not about serving God. It's about serving ourselves by our own gratification pleasures. That is what all impure sins really say at their root. This is not about serving God or giving life. This is about serving my own craven lust. We see this come to a head today. We see that Satan mocks us by these sins, even moving us to destroy our own children in the womb all because of our selfishness. Surely in this, certainly in this, Satan styles himself the prince of the world now, that he has so much control that he convinces even the givers of life to take that life, to destroy that life. My dear faithful, we see to what the world has come. And we know why it has come to this point, because of sin. Notably, as Our Lady says, because of sins of impurity. We have to declare ourselves. We have to declare just exactly whose side we're on. Whether we're on Satan's side and serving under the prince of this world, or whether we are serving Almighty God, our Lord, our Savior. Ask our Lord for the grace to be faithful to him. Ask him to send the Holy Ghost again to renew that faith and to confirm that faith in you, that you will always adhere to him and love him most of all, and always choose what is his service, that in all things that may happen to you from day to day, in this world as it is, that you will seek the will of God, that you will seek to be the agent, as it were, the one who seeks to fulfill God's will in your own life, and to set that example for others as well. Yes, the Holy Ghost comes to convict the world of sin and of justice and of judgment, but he comes to confirm us in our faith. Open your hearts to receive the graces that he has to give you. Our Lord says he goes to send us the Holy Ghost. We are preparing now to commemorate that moment when he ascended into heaven. And 10 days later, when he sent the Holy Ghost, if there's anything that, that is necessary in the world today, it is that this great advocate, this paraclete, the spirit of truth, come into the world triumphant today. May you come into your souls triumphant today. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.